same pro 23. How's it going, YouTube? Okay, I'm getting a lot of questions on how my vacuum sealer works, or how basically these chamber uh, sealers work. Um, it is kind of strange. Uh, it's not something you can really, for most people, immediately grasp how it functions and what's really going on. Um, so I'm going to uh, make an attempt on uh, how to explain it to you or not how to explain it to you, but rather explain it to you how it works. So uh, I'm going to try to illustrate it here. I'm going to draw some pictures and then uh, give you some demonstrations. Oh, that was YouTube. And uh, I'll be right back in a second. Okay, YouTube. All right, let's just keep this simple. Don't worry about uh, actual measurements like liters or ounces or volume units, whatever. Uh, we're going to keep it simple. We're just going to say units of air. All right. So think about uh, a balloon. All right. Let's say this balloon has uh, 100 units of air in it. Okay. Uh, you put the balloon, or let's say you remove 90 units of air from the balloon and you know that a balloon expands and contracts depending on how much air it has in it, the balloon will become smaller, right? So you remove 90 units and you get a balloon that's much smaller with 10 units of air. So basically that's the way this uh, vacuum uh, sealer works. Um, another way I guess you could think about it is uh, if you understand the way a jar works, uh, uh, like a normal, uh, you know, canning jar. You know that uh, hot air expands, and the way the lid works on a canning jar, it lets the air out of the jar because it ex expands as it gets warmer. Then, as the jar cools. Uh, the pressure difference between uh, the outside air uh, that is cooler and the inside air in the jar, which is warmer, they try to compensate for one another, and that reverses this, so the jar lid actually gets sucked down into the uh, jar because the cooler, denser air on the outside wants to go back into the uh, jar that creates the suction. Uh, so that's kind of like a difference of atmospheres. Uh, you could also say that the vacuum chamber works exactly the same kind of method. Okay, here is the vacuum chamber on my sealer. It can only hold as much air as there is volume, the space, at one atmosphere. And one atmosphere meaning, you know, this the air pressure that when you're standing on the ground is basically what you feel. Uh, it's all the pressure pressing in around you, that would be one atmosphere. Now, one atmosphere, plus or minus how hot or cold it is, basically it's going to only fill that chamber with enough air, or so much air. You're not going to be able to put more in it or remove any out of it without it being sealed. Now, even if you add, say, a bag of food uh, to that chamber, it will displace some air, but the air pressure inside the chamber will still be the same. Uh, let's say the chamber holds 100 units of air. Okay? So here we are, we got 100 units of air, including our food. Now, when you close the chamber, it seals it. And when you hear the pump running, it removes the air from the chamber, right? So at when it's finished, uh, removing the air, let's say it removes 90% of the air, so you're left with 10 units of air. Now, those 10 units of air also includes any of the air that was in the food bag. Uh, that makes sense so far? So the way it works is, basically, 
and I'll just stick that there. Uh, you close the lid, and the first thing that happens is the pump starts running and it's removing the air from the sealer, or from the uh, vacuum chamber. Uh, right before, uh, right, the next thing that happens is once it gets to a certain pressure, of a negative pressure, vacuum pressure, it then seals the bag. So if this is the bag of food that's laying across, there's a, a heat bar, uh, it will seal the bag here. And the next thing that happens is uh, the vacuum chamber will then, all the air will go back into the vacuum chamber uh, to bring it back up to atmosphere, if that makes any sense. Uh, it's going to fill the void back to the same atmospheric pressure as it, it was before it started the vacuum sealing process. Uh, what that does is equalizes the pressure on the inside of the chamber, but because the vacuum sealer sealed the bag of food while it was at a negative, uh, after it had evacuated the chamber, it was a negative pressure. The bag, because it can't uh, equalize because it's sealed, remains at that lower pressure. Thus, that is what does the vacuum packing. So keep that in mind. Um, I have some demonstration to go through that I shot in a different video. Uh, we can take a look at that and maybe you can get a better hands on uh, how this all works. So hopefully this makes some sense, guys. Take care. All right, so uh, first of all, I'm going to I'm gonna take a bag of paracord. Obviously, uh, the paracord shouldn't come out of here. Okay, vacuum chamber is going to empty itself or evacuate itself of as much air as it can over the course of a set period of time. Now at the same time, at the same time, not only is the chamber being evacuated, but also because the bag in the chamber is there, let me rephrase that, because the bag is in there, in the same chamber that is being void of air, the bag itself will also be void of air. When it seals, it's going to collapse the bag because the chamber itself is coming back up to atmosphere, but it seals the bag before it does, therefore the bag is left with as little air as the chamber was before it started sealing it, if that makes any sense. There it goes. And that sound you hear is actually the chamber filling back up with air. There you go. So, you know, vacuum sealed paracord. Uh, basically pulled all the air out of the chamber and the bag. It seals the bag and then fills the chamber back. Uh, let's do this bag of flour. Now you'd think a bag of flour, if you imagine putting this into a regular vacuum sealer where it only makes contact with the top, it pulls air out of the bag while the, the outside of the bag is under normal air uh, room temperature or room atmospheric pressure. Yeah, of course, that's going to pull air from the bag as well as probably pull a lot of the uh, content of the bag because it's so fine right out of the bag. But uh, because the chamber and the inside of the bag are at the same pressure when the bag is sealed, the content never leaves the bag. So. Think about that and watch this. Get you a close up here. And 
watch the end of that bag. That flower will not move. It may change shape, but you'll never see it cross this line right here. Now, do you understand the concept? The chamber and the bag now are all equalizing under a much lower air pressure. Uh, then, this, then the bag's going to be sealed and then the pressure in the chamber will equalize to the outside air pressure. Here we go. Ta-da! The flower never moved. Oh, let me back out here. So the flower never... Oh, sorry. The flower never really moved past that one spot uh, after it's sealed. And now it's like a brick of flour. <laughs> uh, it's starting to make sense now. Uh, <clears throat> let's see, what else can I seal up here? Uh, you saw the oil trick. Uh, I had one more bag out here. Here we go. Uh, let's do some water. Uh, you know, with these, these vacuum sealers, it's really easy. You can seal anything, literally, because the the uh, the way they work, uh, it's impossible to have anything come out of the bag because you're not creating a vacuum pressure inside the bag. It's outside the bag. So uh, I'm going to take some water here and pour it into this bag. Say, uh, what is this? Uh, 12 ounces, 16 ounces of water, and uh, the only thing I need to make sure of is in this vacuum chamber. You can see this white thing. I'm going to pull one of these white plates out because it uh, fills up it, the vacuum chamber, so it doesn't have to work as hard to evacuate as much of the air out as necessary. But uh, the reason I'm pulling it out is to make the distance between the sealer rod and the bottom of the uh, vacuum chamber a little higher because I don't want uh, to spill a bunch of water in my sealer. So, you can see there's a little bubble in there, but uh, I'm going to have to pull both of these out of here. chamber is going to tank longer because there's more area now for it to void itself of air, but it's going to take longer to uh, work, but uh, here we go. And watch, watch the bubble in there. It'll get bigger and bigger and bigger. And it's actually not the bubble getting bigger. It's the density of the air expanding. If that you think about it in a physics kind of way, uh, it's literally the expansion of air. It's the same thing that happens to your blood uh, when you go up in an airplane really high, or actually because this vacuum pressure is even uh, a lower uh, atmospheric change, it's almost like being in outer space. Uh, you can picture what your blood does. Uh, if you were to step outside a pressurized cabin of a spaceship straight into outer space, your blood would instantly boil uh, and you'd pretty much explode. Uh, and this is a good uh, good example how. And there you go. And you can see the uh, bubble inside and actually returned to its original size. Uh, there you go, bag of water. Uh, there is just a little bit of air in it, but uh, not a whole lot. It's about the same amount we started with. So, yep, bag of water, not leaking. And there you go. 
Does that make sense? I hope uh, I explained this okay and you kind of understand how it works now. Uh, and uh, basically the reason why these types of sealers are this expensive uh, is because it's a little more, uh, there's a lot more to it. Uh, and it takes a lot more quality parts to assemble them, I'm assuming. So, anyway, that's how this sucker works. I uh, hope that works for you guys. And if you have any other questions, let me know. Take care, YouTube.